praise the Lord. We have so many out sick with this flu. Amen. If you're watching online, we welcome you today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Why don't we just lift our hands toward heaven right now and just get in the presence of the Lord. Invite his presence into this place this morning. We love you, Jesus. We worship you today. Oh, we've come to praise you, oh God. We've come to lift you up and give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we're here today, God. It's why we've assembled ourselves together. To lift up the name of Jesus. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Hallelujah. We give you praise, almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Ose is going to come and pray. Let's pray together this morning. In the name of Jesus, don't lift your hands to heaven and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in this house this morning. Thank you for your presence that is in this place right now. Lord, we pray that you have your way in this place. Have your way, oh God, in our lives. Have your way in everything we shall do here this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we've not come to seek any man. We've not come to seek anything but you, O oh God. We pray that you show us your face today. Reveal yourself to us. Show us yourself in a way that we have not seen you before. In a way we've never known you before. In the mighty name of Jesus. O oh God, I take authority in the name of Jesus. I come against every form of weakness every form of manipulation from the pit of hell, every form of lies of the devil taking place right now, I bind all these activities. In the mighty name of Jesus, I toward the effort of the wicked right now in this place, and I sprinkle In the mighty name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon this arena. In the name of Jesus, only the will of the Lord shall come to pass right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you Jesus for what you are doing in this house. Thank you for the spirit that is taking over this place already. Thank you for the kingdom that is revealed in this place today. Thank you for the sick that shall be healed in this house today. Thank you for the weak that shall be revived. Those that, oh God, need comfort, that shall be comforted in this meeting. Have your way, oh God. Nobody will come to this meeting today and go back the same way. Let sinners come to this place today and be converted, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God, and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. One more time, lift your hands to heaven and worship the King of kings, the Lord of Lord. Let him know that you are in the house this morning. Let the Lord know that you are in his house this morning. Let the Lord know that you have not, seek any, you have not come here to seek any man. You've come to seek him. Wave your hands to him. Tell him how much you love him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Make some noise to the Lord. Make some noise. Make some noise to the King of Kings. Make some noise to the Lord of Lord. It's worthy. It's worthy. It's worthy. Hallelujah. Can you guys help us worship this morning? Would you just... Come on. Can somebody give God some praise right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing this together. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. 
till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I've tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness to the kingdom of light. Can we just, more than words on a screen, can we say it prayerfully? Remind yourself what God has brought you from, what God has brought you through, what he set you free from. We needed rescue. We needed a savior. And God, who is rich in mercies, well, we were yet sinners, died for us on the cross. Singers, can you guys sing that right now? I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory.
Oh my. Turn to your neighbor and tell him if you knew what God did for me, you'd want to shout, shout, shout all night too. Tell your neighbor if you knew what the Lord, come on, turn to somebody and testify in this house. If you knew what the Lord did for me, you'd want to dance, dance, dance all night. Hey, does anybody have a testimony in the house? Come on, when I think of his goodness. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me. When I think of his goodness and how he's set me free, I want to dance.
under any other name but the name of Jesus every knee must bow to the name of Jesus every sickness must bow to the name of Jesus every depression must bow to the name of Jesus every mental health issue must bow to the name of Jesus lift up your hands lift up your voice and invoke that name over your situation right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. We invoke that name. We praise that name. We magnify that name. We bless your name. Glory unto Nombre, Signor. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Your name is great. Your name is mighty. Your name is powerful. Your name has all power. Your name has all authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Somebody lift up and shout right now. Hallelujah! This isn't theatrics. This isn't a show. But this is about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Say, God, I thank you for giving me life. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for healing me. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you for dying for me. Lord, I thank you for providing for me, God. I thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. 
You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Can we just sing that as a congregation? Just let the music come down a little bit. Let's join with the hosts of heaven. That's what they're singing in eternity. Myriads of angels are singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty for all of eternity. And if you think that is weird or out of your element, the Bible says this is what we're going to be doing in heaven. So one last time, just as a congregation, if you know you've been redeemed, if you know your salvation is in the Lord, if you know heaven is your home, holy forever, hallelujah. Let's sing it as a congregation. say I've been redeemed so isn't it funny when they probably look at us somebody who's fell into sin into addiction into back whatever they look down and they say man those people are falling but they're saying holy 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 I thought that was reserved for angels only not so the child of God he is holy he is worthy he is awesome hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus one more time let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. How many is blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. You guys may be seated this morning. We welcome you to Believer's Church. And um, if you are a guest here this morning, we, we want to just um, welcome you and... Um, give you a hand clap of welcoming. Can we give our guests a hand clap? And we want you to uh, scan this QR code on your smartphone and a digital connect card is gonna pop up on the screen. And we just want you to bring that to the hospitality desk after the service and uh, we got a gift for you. Uh, maybe you don't wanna do it this way. You can fill out a physical card at the desk as well. And uh, we encourage you to do that. If this is your very first time in this church, you've never been here before. Um, also, I almost forgot. Well, I didn't actually almost forget. I was trying to find out when to when to do it in the service. 
but um, oh my goodness, praise God. Um, so, so um, last night at prayer meeting, um, I, I just want to I just want to back up a little bit and say, um, how many love our pastor? How many support our pastor? How many is on board with the vision that God has given our pastor? Praise God. How many know that he is the pastor of this church? Pastor Wayne. Praise God. So, um, Pastor Wayne is very transparent and very open and very vulnerable at times with the congregation, unlike a lot of ministers, or not that it's a comparison. But I want to say that our pastor is a man of integrity. He's a man of the word. He's a man who values the word of God. And uh, he's been very open, as many of you know him, with his life and the things that he's went through. But um, last night at prayer meeting, Pastor Wayne, um, he, he, he done did something. Come on, somebody. Can, can, we, can we get a praise God?
my. I expected a reaction, but not that reaction. Wow. Whew. My goodness. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask my family to come up here with me. I know Christian's busy in the sound booth, but if you could just run up here. I want them to come up here. Sister Jenny. Sister Jenny. Come right up. So I uh, looked into a few places to propose, and we were going to go to Gimli, and I drove up there the other day, and the water was still frozen. I thought, well, that's no good. And Pastor Dylan was like, you can go here, you can go there. Take her up on this rooftop. And I'm like, how am I going to get her on a rooftop? And uh, he was trying to make it all so beautiful and, and special. And uh, I thought, well... I talked to my my kids, and they wanted to be a part of this. And um, but well, there's no place that symbolizes my life other than right here. And she might as well know what she's getting. Uh, <laughs> and so, when I asked her, I didn't ask her to marry me. I asked her to marry us, this family, and, and this family as well. So. And people have said, uh, well, it was about time, Pastor. Uh, but I had a lot to consider. Um, I had my children to consider. I had this church family to consider. I had Jenny to consider because being a pastor's wife is, has its moments and uh, it's not, uh, not an easy role to fill. And I tried to prepare her. I think I may have scared her more than prepared her. Um, but she's coming into it, eyes wide open. And, uh, you know, life, life has a way of taking all your plans and just changing things. Pastors are no, I've, I've learned because I, I bragged as a young pastor because I grew up in a broken home and I grew up in a, an alcoholic with an alcoholic drug addicted father. And I bragged as a young pastor that my children will never have to know what it's like to live in a broken home. And they'll never know what it's like to have divorced parents. But I learned that pastors are not exempt from life's troubles. And although life led me down a path that I never thought I would go, and it was humbling, it was humiliating. And the devil told me, your ministry is over. Who will ever want to listen to a pastor that, that lost his wife? And, but how many know the devil's a liar today? I feel closer to God than I ever have. I feel more anointed than I have. I feel like I'm in the prime of my ministry. And greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I don't know if anybody else up here wants to say anything. I've been speechless since last night, and um, I knew that I'd probably have an opportunity to say something, and I'm I'm still speechless. So I'm just I'm just very emotional. So I'm just going through. I'm I was reminded this morning of God's faithfulness. God called me to I wasn't going to say this. God called me to a season of singleness that I thought would have been a year to. It was 10 years. He said, I have someone specific for you that goes hand in hand with your calling and vice versa. Wait. Did I wait well for 10 years? No, I didn't wait the best, that's for sure. But it was worth the wait. 
Thank you. Everybody got shy all of a sudden. Yeah, we all got shy. What's going on here? Amen. Can we, can we give them a hand one more time? This is awesome. Amen. Um, as many of you know, um, Pastor Wayne, um, you, you're my dad, man. You know, my, I, I, he mentored me. He brought me in. Um, I was whatever. And uh, I'm in ministry because you answered the call to pour into my life. And for the past five, six years, I've been under you and watching you. And as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what I've been doing. And uh, through that whole time, I, I got to watch you go through a process of, of healing, yes, of, uh, you know, right at the tragedy and, and things like that. But, but through, through all of that, um, God, God's been faithful, and uh, I believe this is, this is an answer to prayer uh, tonight. Well, I was talking to Sister Zanya before the service, and um, she brought up a memory of during COVID, and um, I was like, man, when am I going to get a wife? Forget about that guy. Where's my wife? And... Um, Lo and behold, um, Sister Jenny walks in the church, but she came with Cheyenne. And uh, somebody in that initial meeting said, you know what? Somebody's just going to walk in, and there's going to be like, they're going to come together. And uh, it's going to be Pastor Wayne's wife and Brother Dylan's wife. Uh, same package. And, uh, and that's, that's an answer to prayer. Praise God. So, uh, so thankful. So awesome. I love you, Dad. I love you, Jenny and Christian and Tiana. And I'm so thankful to be in this church and part of your family. I think that was breaking the rules. They're supposed to stay a Bible apart. Amen? Just kidding. Just kidding. Praise God. Well, it's a good day in the house of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. God is moving. There's good things happening, and greater things are yet to come for Believer's Church. Um, we're just going to transition now. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the guest cards, please fill that out. Um, oh, my goodness. I don't even know where I'm at with the announcements. So please fill out the guest cards. We are going to watch a video announcement this morning. Can, can we get those video announcements up? Please pay attention to the screen. Welcome to Sunday morning service at Believer's Church. Good morning. We're so excited to have you here. This is an amazing place to encounter the presence of the Lord. And we just wanted to let you know about a few things that are going on during the week. Tuesday night, we have our Celebrate Recovery at 6 p.m. in the Community Center, and that's for anyone dealing with a hurt or a habit or a hang-up. And it's a 12-step Christ Center program. Also, every Wednesday, we have our midweek service. That's at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So if you miss Sunday morning, then you can come to our Wednesday evening service. Saturday at 7 p.m. is our prayer meeting, and that is so important. It's so important to come and, and pray for our church. Prayer, God does nothing unless his people pray, and so it's, it's so important to have that, and, and so we have that at 7 p.m. here at the church every Saturday. Come pray with us and be a part of the move of God in this city. And every fourth Sunday, we have baptisms here. So if you're getting serious with your relationship with Jesus, if you want to commit your life to the Lord, come be baptized. And, and so you can sign up to be baptized at the hospitality desk. And every first Sunday of the month is our child dedication Sunday. Uh, so if you want to dedicate your baby or your child to the Lord, then also sign up at the hospitality. 
So if you're new here to Believer's Church, we welcome you. Thank you for coming here. We're so glad you're here. We'd love to connect with you. So if you could fill out a connect card, that'll be on the screen as a QR code, or we have a card at the hospitality desk. Fill that out and you can get a free gift at the end of the service or talk to one of the ushers and we'll get you that gift. Thank you for coming. So if you're new here and you want to get involved in the church, uh, then we have what we call the Believers 101 course. Uh, So you would sign up at the hospitality desk as well. And that's like a new member crash course uh, where we go over our values as a church. uh, We discuss what our beliefs are, um, where we want to go as a church. So if you want to get involved in the church, then you have to take the Believers 101 course. You get to talk to the pastors, ask some questions. It's a really good time. said, let all the little children come to me. Are you a kid aged 4 to 12? We would love to have you come back to our Believers Kids Children's Ministry, where we'll come together for a time of worship, a Bible lesson, fun activities, and even a snack. Make sure you ask your parent to pull out their phone and download the Kid Check app so that they can check you in and we can make sure that you're safe and secure and we have lots of fun together learning about Jesus and the Word of God. Hey everybody, Wayne Buster here, Senior Pastor of Believers Church. And I'm so excited to invite you to a very special weekend, April 26, 27, and 28. It's our annual Awakening Conference. I'm so pleased to let you know that this year, our guest speaker is Jonathan Suber from Round Rock, Texas. God is going to move. There's gonna be miracles, signs, wonders. People will be healed, saved, and delivered. Criticize you, be negative against you, try to talk you out of your miracle, and you've got to learn how to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to thy word. I know I'm almost out of time. I've only got five minutes, but I want to preach to somebody. Who am I talking to? That what God is putting you through, nobody understands right now. You need to raise your hands and say, Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Don't stop till you're ready to birth it. And we just can't wait to see you there. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday and Saturday night at 7 o'clock and Sunday morning at 11. Right here at 465 Alexander Avenue. That's April 26, 27, 28. Believer's Church. See you there. I feel like everybody that's in the middle of a miracle needs to run up here right now. If you're in the middle of a miracle, can I get up here by you guys? Come on. (laughs) I'm in the middle. Come on. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. It may be physical. It may be cataracts. It may be crickling. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I'm in the middle of something. If it's sickness in your body, raise your hand. If it's sickness in your body, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Sickness. Let this turn into a prayer service. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I am excited for the Awakening Weekend. Praise God. It's always a blessing um, to have somebody add to the fire. Amen. Um, I think a lot of times in spirit-filled churches, we this guy's bringing fire or this guy's bringing... Re- no, J- Jesus is the fire. Jesus is revival. Jesus is everything we need. He's coming and he's adding to what Jesus is already doing in our church. You do not want to miss this weekend. Um, They're always powerful. We see people get saved, and that's the goal. And uh, the church also just equipped and blessed and strengthened and ministered to. So we encourage you. um, I know the weather's getting nice. Please, 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 please. Uh, It costs the church money, obviously, to fly people in, and we have to pay bless them and pay an honorarium and all of that but you are going to be blessed by this weekend we encourage you please friday saturday sunday god's going to move it's going to be an awesome time in the house of the lord how many say amen we're coming expecting and god is going to move as he already is but it's just going to be a blessed time so we encourage you to please come um also if you watched in the video there they were talking about believers 101 
what is Believers 101? This is a new member crash course where we go through our values, our beliefs, uh, what kind of church we're trying to be, and all that. If you're here and you're like, man, I like Believers Church, I like what God is doing, I want to get involved there and serve somewhere, you, you have to sign up for Believers 101. It's like a prerequisite to serve in the church, just so like a couple months down the line, you're not like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you guys believe in healing or something. And uh, so we just go over all that, what we believe, and, and that sort of thing. So if you want to sign up for that, please sign up at the desk. The date is yet to be determined. We encourage you to please sign up to let us know, and uh, we'll be out back to you with a date very soon. Luke 21, verse 1 to 4 says, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contribute out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. Isn't it a funny picture that this people in the temple are offering gifts or bringing their tithes or offerings to the Lord? And can you imagine like Jesus just sitting here watching us put money in the in the offering and that's exactly what he's doing in that scripture he's watching people give and he's observing how they're giving are they giving out of faith are they giving out of uh, belief are they giving out of believing that god is going to do something with their money or are they just saying you know what I, I got my hour and a half fix of my religious fix i'm throwing in some money into the treasury and that's it and that's exactly what he was doing he was observing how they were giving and the bible says he noticed a widow put in like two dollars or whatever you want to call it but she gave more than everybody else why because that was god's not telling us to give him everything out of our bank account or anything like that but in comparison the religious people were giving nonchalantly not expecting anything just doing a religious duty but that lady she said you know what? even though i have nothing i love god i'm gonna bless his kingdom i'm gonna bless what he's doing so this morning i challenge you to do that just you know, we're in North America, we're so consumer driven where uh, st a statistic recently said people would much rather give money at a church to get their what they paid for than to get involved in a church. But at Believers Church, we believe that we give because we love Jesus, because we believe in his kingdom, because we believe in his vision. So I challenge you this morning to give that way, just not nonchalantly, like we're just giving to something that doesn't matter. We're giving to the kingdom of God. This is I said it last week. This is the only organization, only institution, only thing on planet Earth. The Bible says Jesus himself is building. Everything else in the world is going to pass away, but the church is going to remain victorious, glorious, and glorified because God himself is building it. So at this time, we're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings. Sister Diane's in the back if you want to give by debit or credit. The ushers are going to bring the offering plates up here to the front. At Believer's Church, we like to march around the front and present our gifts, our tithes, our offerings before the Lord as an act, as a sign of worship to him. So if we can get those offering plates up here, we're going to sing another chorus. Believers Youth Class, you guys are dismissed to the back. And Believers Kids Sunday School is dismissed to the back. God bless you guys as you give this morning in Jesus' name.
And uh, we had a wonderful day yesterday at uh, Brother John and Sister Lydia's baby shower. And for those who haven't heard, they're expecting a boy. In May, May 11th, I believe. May 11 is the due date. And today is their third anniversary today. Give them a big hand. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. We're going to go to the word of the Lord this morning to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Amen. It's good to see you all, uh, each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. And as I mentioned earlier, we have so many who are sick with this flu and different things going on. But uh, we are so glad that you are with us and those watching online. We welcome you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, if you have your Bibles. If not, we'll have it on the screen here momentarily. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. And it says this, And now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, uh, attacked Ziklag, and burned it with fire. And had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. And so David and his men came to the city, and there was, and uh, there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and wept. Until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. The King James Version says he encouraged himself. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Hamelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. And so David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Father, we thank you for your presence that we have felt so powerfully in this house today. We thank you for your word that is forever settled in heaven. I thank you for these precious people who I love so dearly that are here to worship you and hear and respond to the word of God. I pray that you would touch my body, touch my voice. Help me to preach the word of God with anointing. Help us to receive what you would say to us today, I ask it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. I wrestled with the Lord over this particular message today. I thought, Lord, I, I would really like to preach something a little more deep, a little more, uh, something with a little more wow factor to it. You know, we, we want to preach something that people are going to learn something from and develop. And I really, really wrestled with this message, but I couldn't get away from it. I even went back into the archives and thought, well, maybe I'll preach something old, something that I preached back years ago that had a, had a big effect, and, and God just wouldn't let me off with it. So I, I want to I talk to us this morning on this topic, it's mine. Why don't you say that with me this morning, it's mine. Some, you got you to know what you have sometimes, and you got to sometimes make a declaration. No, 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 that's mine. It's mine. And so David was leading his men, and while they were out uh, doing exploits, they came back, and the Amalekites had raided their camp and had uh, kidnapped the wives, the sons, and the daughters, and had burned the camp to the ground. What they couldn't take, they destroyed. What they couldn't carry away, they burned it to the ground. The Bible tells us that the men wept until they had no more tears to weep. They couldn't cry 
anymore. I don't know if you've ever been around or maybe you have done it yourself. You've cried until no more tears were able to come. I've been there and I've been around those and I've held those who were in that type of shape. They had lost their families. They lost everything they ever had. And uh, the Amalekites had taken it all. The Bible makes it very clear they didn't kill them, <coughs> excuse me, but they stole them. They kidnapped them. All right, guys, I don't know what you're doing. I have not been preaching for 45 minutes. <laughs> I know you're fixing it. I just I had to tease you a little bit. Um, and, and so uh, I don't know who paid them to do that, but we'll talk after church. <coughs> Amen. And, and so it was that they were heartbroken, and they, they uh, had lost everything, and they wept, and they cried. And then you see what happens when you don't deal with your, your hurts properly. Your hurts turn to bitterness and anger. We could preach a whole message on that. Because it went from grieving, it went from uh, having a broken heart. Now they've turned their attention away from what they've lost, and they've turned their attention towards the leadership which was David. And they begin to talk about killing their leader. Let's just kill him here. He's the one who brought us here. He's the ones responsible for this. Isn't that just like Christians? Instead of blaming the Amalekites who had done this horrible thing, they had blamed uh, uh, David. Instead of blaming the devil for everything that goes wrong in our life, we blame God. How could God allow that? How could God do that when it was the enemy that did it in the first place? you got to put the blame on the right person. Hello? And so they begin to, to talk to each other and say, okay, uh, let, let's kill David. Let, let's stone him. And uh, you talk about being discouraged. Now, I've had, as a pastor, I, I've been doing this a long time. I've had disgruntled saints, but uh, as far as I know, nobody has ever planned to kill me yet. Uh, as far as I know, nobody had, had, was waiting in the parking lot to stone me on the way out to my car. Uh, this was a bad situation for David, and he was grieved, and uh, what, what am I going to do? And so David went, and he, and he uh, talked to the Lord, and he encouraged himself, and, and uh, the Lord spoke to him and said, pursue. And if you skip down to verse 17 of 1 Samuel 30, then David attacked them. After he got the word of the Lord, he went after them and attacked them from twilight even until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all. I like that. I've preached that around Canada and the United States when I was an evangelist. David recovered all, a man that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. And that's, that's really what I want to talk to us about here today is recovering all, taking back the things that have been taken from us, taking back what the enemy has stolen from us. You will find that David did three things in response to the attack of the Amalekites. The first thing he did after he was discouraged and after he was disheartened, the first thing he did was he inquired, he, sorry, he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself. And so I have preached this to this church over the years many times. You've got to know how to encourage yourself. If you're waiting every situation you go through, every valley you go through, every problem you find yourself in, if you are waiting for somebody to encourage you, there will be times you will wait a mighty long time. Hello? Hello? you got to know how to encourage yourself. I'll tell you what the church needs. The church needs a few more Barnabases in the, in, the, in the work of God, people who have the gift and the ministry of encouragement. It doesn't cost you anything to encourage somebody, to shake their hand and say, I love you. You're doing a good job. Sister Larissa, you're doing a good job at the Connect Cafe. Everybody's loving what you're cooking out there. Hey, it doesn't cost anything to, to encourage somebody. We need to be baptized with the spirit of Barnabas and learn how to encourage one another. But if there is not a Barnabas near... 
And if you are going through something so deep and so painful that you haven't even told your best friend, how many know what I'm talking about right now? When you go through something, you can't even put it into words. You haven't told the pastor. You haven't told a man, the assistant pastor. You haven't told the usher. You haven't told the altar worker. You haven't told your best friend, but you're going through this seemingly alone. You have to know how to encourage yourself in the Lord. And I like to think that David, when he was faced with this situation, began to recount the many times that God came through for him. I think he remembered the time when he was in his daddy's field and he was tending the sheep and a bear came out and tried to eat one of daddy's lambs. But the spirit of the Lord came upon David and David killed the bear with his bare hands. I think he remembered the other day, a man when the lion came and tried to ravaged the flock and again the spirit of the Lord came upon David and David killed the lion come on I'm talking about a lion he killed a lion with his bare hands I think he remembered the day when the 13 foot Goliath said choose you a man and little scrawny 17 year old David with five stones and a slingshot said I'm your man you want to fight I'm your guy I'm your man and he stepped out on the field the little children's song said one little stone went in the sling and a prayer went up to God but the giant came to, I think David remembered about the past victories and what God did for him last year, last month, what God did for him and what God had brought him through. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Has God ever touched you? Has God ever healed your body? Has God ever, come on, it's a, can I get a witness in this house? Has God ever blessed you financially? Has God ever brought you out of the valley? Has God ever touched you? your mind when you were messed up has God ever done anything for you wave your hand and shout somebody shout yes he has yes he has then you need to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord because if God touched you yesterday he can touch you today if he healed you last year he can heal you today if he worked a miracle six months ago he can work a miracle for you today somebody clap your hands and say God do it again Woo! God, do it again. Touch your neighbor and say, God, do it again for my neighbor. So the first thing he did was encourage himself. Because you can't do nothing when you're discouraged. Hello? You can't preach good when you're discouraged. You can't even sing good when you're discouraged. You, you're not going to be a good soul winner when you're discouraged. You've got to find some fresh courage. You've got to find, find some fresh joy. You've got to find some new hope. And so we find all of those things in the Lord. <coughs> and so he encouraged himself. Oh, if pastor would just call me. I've been sick 21 days. Pastor didn't even call well, did you call me? How am I supposed to know you're sick for 21 days? Hello? Did you call for the elders of the church like you're instructed to? Hello? Did you call a prayer partner? Well, I don't have a prayer partner. That's the problem. Get one. Hello? Before you leave this house today, find somebody and say, hey, will you be my prayer partner? I'll pray for you. You'll pray for me. We'll do it every day. Come on, does that sound like a good idea to somebody? Amen. And so you can't chase after a troop when you're discouraged. You can't recover when you're discouraged. You've got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Stop putting it off on everybody else. It is my responsibility to encourage myself in the Lord. Oh, Lord. Somebody asked me back a little while ago. They said, Pastor, we know everybody talks to you, but who do you talk to? I said, I talk to Jesus. Now, I do have some pastors that I do reach out to, but my first, my first response is to talk to the Lord. 
He's my strength. He's my power. He's my comfort. He's all that I, he is more than enough for me. I've learned through the years how to encourage myself in the Lord. I've learned to stop sweating the small stuff because God is a God of big stuff. And if I'll just be faithful doing the small stuff, I'll live to see when God does the big, I'll live to see when God does the big things in my life. So I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to backslide. I'm not going to run out of the church. I'm going to be faithful in my season because in due time, I will reap if I faint not. Woo! Somebody push your neighbor and say, I'm going to reap. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody push your neighbor and say, I've been crying long enough. I'm going to reap. I'm going to stay faithful long enough to get out of this season. This, uh, this season's not going to last forever. This season of suffering won't last forever. I'm going to stay planted. Because when this season passes, the next season will be harvest time. Oh, hallelujah. The reason some of you have not seen a harvest is because you haven't stayed planted in your season. Well, I wasn't intending on saying any of that. That was for free. You gotta stay planted in your season. You can't uproot yourself every time you have a bad day, every time it rains, every time it gets a little chilly. You gotta stay planted because if I stay planted long enough, I'm gonna spring up. We were looking at something the other day and Sister Jenny said, I can't tell if those trees are dead or alive. One of my smart aleck kids said, well, it was just winter, Jenny. <laughs> but my smart aleck kid was right. I said, it looks like every other tree right now. They're, they've just survived the winter. You can't tell if they're dead or alive. But give it another month. Give it another month or so. Ah, don't count me out yet. Oh, somebody ought to get on your feet and say, don't count me out yet. Just give me a little more time. Just give, hey, just give me a little more time and you'll see that I'm alive and well. Oh, that's a prophetic word for somebody. Dear God, help me. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't got to number two yet. He encouraged himself in the Lord. The next thing he did was he inquired of the Lord. Say that with me. He inquired of the Lord. It didn't say he consulted Facebook. It didn't say he put out a poll on social media. It didn't say he called his best friend. He didn't say he sent a carrier pigeon back to his homies back home. He inquired of the Lord. When's the last time when you were faced with a problem, you said, God, what, are, what should I do? God, what should I do? And stayed in prayer until the answer came. My God, I'm about ready to preach like a Pentecostal preacher. And stayed in prayer until the answer came. My God, I feel that. I'm going to say it again. And stayed in prayer until the answer came. We pray for five seconds. It doesn't happen the next day. And we say, well, it wasn't the will of God. And we move on to the next thing. Don't you move on until you either get a yay or a nay from the other world. I shall, we used to sing songs, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I'm going to stay right here until I get an answer. Daniel prayed 21 days. The angel said, we heard you on day one, but we were fighting with the prince of Persia. Don't stop praying until the answer gets through. My God, that's a word for somebody. Don't 
quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep praying. So he encouraged himself in the Lord. And then he inquired of the Lord. And then the third thing that he did, Pastor Ose, was he obeyed the Lord. Woo! He encouraged himself in the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. And when you inquire of the Lord, the Lord will answer. Sometimes it's a yes. Sometimes it's a no. Sometimes it's not right now. Sometimes it's be still and know that I'm God. Sometimes it's pursue for you shall not fail. And he told David, go. Pursue that troop. You go after them, David. And you take back everything that was taken from you. Listen now. He said, you will not fail. Can you imagine an ironproof guarantee from the king of the universe? Go after them. You will not fail. You will recover all. And so even though he got an answer from God, it still required obedience. It still required action on the part of David. And David pursued and they fought for a, at least a full day day amen but at the end of the battle the victory belonged to David don't get weary in your pursuing don't get if God told you to go go if God told you to fight fight because in the end victory will be yours now I've heard the sermons there was a famous preacher just recently preached a message called We Are Not David. I'm aware of that. I'm aware I'm not David. And he used that message to discount using anything in the Old Testament to encourage us or to we should not be associating ourselves with David because we're not David. And, uh, and God, what God did for David was a specific thing just for David. Well, I may not have the education of some. I did graduate high school. I did graduate seminary. I was the valedictorian at the School of Hard Knocks. And I've been around long enough to understand that if God did it for David, he can do it for Wayne Buster. I know I'm not David. I know I'm not fighting with the Amalekites. Actually, my enemy is far more fierce than the Amalekites. I am wrestling with the powers of darkness. But if God could do it for David, he can do it for me. He can do it for you. Tell your neighbor, he can do it for you. You might not be David, but God loves you just as much as he loved David. And God is, oh, I'm about ready to preach in this house. And God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm not fighting Amalekites or Hittites or Jebusites. Sometimes I have to fight the carnalites, the prayerlessites, the worshiplessites, the coldites, the lukewarmites. The it's too loud in here, ites. It's too hot in here, ites. It's too cold in here, Ites. The preacher yells too much, Ites. You think I'm yelling now, honey? When revival hits this house, you haven't seen me yell yet. You think me and Brother Andy act crazy now? You wait till we baptize 101 days. You'll see what crazy looks like. My God. Woo! I'd run an 
Oh, but it might offend some of you religiousites. I feel like a lion that's been caged up. I'm ready to roar in this house today. I'm ready to let loose in this house because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Uh, I'm not fighting Amalekites, but I am fighting an enemy. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary... Poke your neighbor and say, that's talking about you, your adversary. Your adversary. And then we're told who that adversary is. The devil. As a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Again, I've heard preachers say, well, He's just like a roaring lion. He doesn't have any teeth. Tell Job that. Tell Job that. God said to Satan, what have you been doing, Satan? Hey, devil, what have you been up to? Walking to and fro in the earth. Why are you doing that? Just seeking whom I can devour. Oh, have you considered Job? Why would I consider Job? Is he a bad man? No, he's actually a good man. I think you should bite him. He's a righteous man. There's not a man like him in the world. Why don't you attack him? You think God, you think the devil just attacks you because of something you did in your past? Because God's getting back at you for something you did in in your yesterday? God's not getting back at you. God believes in you so much. He'll say, hey devil, have you considered brother so and so? Have you? uh, I trust them so much that you can do whatever you want to do to them and they will never curse me. For the child of God, the devil can only go so far. I'm covered by the blood. Somebody say that I'm covered by the blood. I have a hedge. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I have a hedge. You can't touch this devil unless God says you can. I have a hedge of protection about me. But every once in a while, God will lift his hand just to show the devil who's boss. Go ahead, touch him. Go ahead, touch him. Go ahead, do what you want. He will not curse me. Oh, 1 Peter 5, 9. Resist him steadfast in the faith. You have an adversary. No, it's not the Amalekites. And no, I'm not fighting with a sword. And I'm not fighting with a slingshot and five smooth stones. For the Bible tells me that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Let me preach you a moment longer. Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against... Not Amalekites, no. The the Amalekites, that was a walk in the park. Sorry, David. I know it was tough, but you had the Amalekites and the Hittites and the Parasites to worry about. We've got principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, Mr. Theologian, tell me again how I'm not David. Tell me again how God is not going to come through for me. Tell me again that God is not with me. You better believe he's with me, for I'm fighting things that I can't see. I'm fighting things I can't touch. I'm fighting in the realm of the Holy Ghost. I don't know, you may not be able to name your enemy all the time. And although you may not be able to physically see it, it is nonetheless just as powerful 
and just as real as any foe that David rose a sword against. Listen to me, I, I want to I read this, the same scripture to you from the message translation. It says in verse 10, God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. Huh. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Tell me again how bad the Amalekites were. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued. So then when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be standing on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. I'm talking about there are some things today that are mine, and it's not optional. And the enemy does come in at times if we're not careful, because let's face it, sometimes we get a little lax. Sometimes we get a little apathetic. Sometimes we get a little rocked to sleep, and the enemy likes to creep in and steal some things from us. And we don't even realize until they're gone. We are in a fight. Paul wrote to his spiritual son in 2 Timothy 2 and 3. and says, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has enlisted him as a soldier. We are in a fight. I know that the battle was won at Calvary. But if we don't enforce that victory, the devil will try to take back every inch that he can. You have to maintain that victory. You have to say, no, no, no. This is mine. Devil, you came to my house. I just want to remind you, this ain't your house. This is my house. You touch my family, you better realize it's not your family. It's my family. You touch my health. It's not your health. It's my health. It's my job. It's my marriage. It's my, and you cannot have it. I'm a soldier. I've been called to this warfare. I am trained and I am heavily armed. Satan has not changed his tactics since the book of Job, which, by the way, is the oldest book in the Bible. The tactics that he uses against you have not changed since then. He's still at war with us. He still wants to come in. What does he want to do with John 10 and 10? Sums it up. Jesus says this, the thief comes not except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Satan only shows up to do three things. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
If you think he's coming today against you to do something different, you're wrong. He's come to steal, to kill, and destroy. He th you think the devil looks at you and realizes you're having a bad week and says, uh, I think I'll go easy this week. No, he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Your grandma dies and your heart is broken and the devil says, oh, that poor thing. She just lost her grandma. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let her off this week. No, no. He will come right at that time to steal, kill, and destroy. Your marriage falls apart and the devil says, oh, my. No, no. He will use that moment to steal, to kill, and destroy. Your kids are strung out on dope. The devil doesn't say, oh, that poor mama. No, he's going to use that moment to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what he does, and it's all he does. Every day. Every day. Steal, kill, and destroy. Satan's tactics never change. So much so that Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We know what he does. Jesus told us. Steal, kill, destroy. When's the last time the devil put money in your bank account? When's the last time the devil did something nice for you? Did something good for you? He comes to steal, kill, and we are not ignorant of his devices. 1 John 4 and 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You gotta know who you are, you gotta know whose you are, and you gotta know what you've got on the inside of you. I wanna clear something up today. Satan is not equal with God. And I don't know where that comes from. I think that's a trick of the enemy. <coughs> there's God and there's Satan. And they both have equal power and equal authority, and it's just this constant struggle to see who's going to win. I can tell you who's going to win. I can tell you who has already won. God has no equal. If you study the Word of God, there's a passage in there where God says, I looked all around, tried to find somebody like me, and I realized I'm all alone. There's nobody like me. I am God all by myself. As Jonathan Suber says, God don't need any matches. He's fire all by himself. Satan is not equal with God. Satan is a fallen angel. Listen to me now. The devil, so, yeah, he has power. I, I'll give him that. He has some power. But let me tell you something. He couldn't serve God when there wasn't even a devil. Hello? Hello? There was no devil, and he still couldn't make it. He's pathetic. He doesn't even have the keys of his own house. Jesus, when he was, was crucified on Calvary, descended into hell, kicked in the door, and said, I want my keys back. Give me the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he robbed and plundered hell. Devil, you've got nothing on me. I'm a child of God. Greater is he that's in me, and I want my stuff back. I want my health back. I want my money back. I want my family back. I want my children serving God. I want revival. I want everything you've ever taken from me. Whew. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to say, I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I'm tired of fighting with anxiety. God didn't give me anxiety. Devil, I want my peace back. Somebody needs to say, I want my sleep back. Give it back, devil. Give it back, devil. I'm pursuing after you today, and I will not fail, and I will recover all that you've taken from me. Matthew 6, 18. And I say also unto you that you're Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not...
prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Devil, you've got to know who I am. I am part of the church. Amen. And you cannot prevail against me. Let me clarify this. When the devil attacks the church, he's not going to attack these four walls. This is just where the church assembles. But if he's going to attack the assembly, if he's going to attack the ecclesia, he will attack you and I because you and I together make up the church. And so the attack that's come against you, you need to realize it's not just all about you. That's a lie of the devil. He wants to put us in silence. Oh, what I'm going through. Oh, nobody knows. Oh. No, no, no. The attack against you is an attack against all of us. And that's why you need to be able to reach out and say, hey, Sister Sue, pray for me. I'm under attack. Because if you're under attack, I'm under attack. Oh, you're not hearing me today. I said, if you're under attack, I'm under attack because we belong to the same ecclesia. We are the body of Christ. The devil can't attack you without attacking me. And so we need to be in this thing together. If the devil's after you, the body ought to raise up and say, uh 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 uh, you don't own this place. This is my house. This is my family. This is my church. Get out. I said it before, but let me say it again. It's time to get the hell out of your house. It's time to get the hell out of your family, and it's time to get the hell out of the church. You don't belong in here. This is God's house. Whew. Ephesians 4, 27. Nor give place to the devil. Let me ask you a question. How much room have you given him? How much room have you given him in your home? Well, little Johnny, he's only 14, but he smokes pot in his bedroom. But as long as he keeps it in there, my God, I'd kick the door down off of the bedroom and little Johnny and the pot would both be going out. And my kids will shout amen. Amen. What are you doing? Well, just as long as they drink in the basement. I'd rather them drink where I know they're at. Are you lost your ever-loving mind? Whatever happened to as for me and my house, <laughs> we'll serve the Lord. Now, I know pastor's meddling here today, but you've got too much hell in your house. The devil's just robbing me. Yeah, because you left the, the door wide open with the come in and rob me sign on the front. Parents cursing at their, at their or children cursing at their parents. My God. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is my house, devil. Getting quiet in here. This is my house. There's no room for hell in this house. There's no room for that. I am not giving the devil one square inch in this house. When's the last time you've gone in your teenager's room, looked under the bed and in the closet? Well, that's invading his space. Does he pay the rent? <laughs> and my house. My house, Brother Rod. I'll flip over every mattress, look in any drawer I want to look in. This is my house, and hell ain't coming in my house. Give no place to the devil. If he's got no place, he can't stay. I said if he has no place, he can't stay. Give no place to the devil. Get him out of your house. Get him out of your children. Get him out of your marriage. Get him out. Get him out. Get out. This is mine. Somebody shout, this is mine. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord. Musicians, come. I got to quit. Woo. Listen now. Put the devil out of your place and put him in his place. Put the devil out of your place and put him in his place. Acts 1, you shall receive power 
after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power to do what? Power to put the devil in his place. You're out of your place, devil. You're out of place. Well, excuse me, you're a little confused. Did you think you were allowed in my house? No, no, let me clear that up. In Jesus' name, get out. Oh, when's the last time you prayed? I plead the blood over my house, over every door, over every window, every bedroom, every square inch. Devil, get out of my house. God, I didn't intend on saying any of this. Except for that, put the devil out of, his, out of your place. Put him in, you shall receive power. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you. Luke 10, 19. He said, behold, I give you authority. You've heard me preach this before. He said, I've given you power. That word power is dunamis, miraculous, supernatural power. He said, that's the kind of power I'm giving you. But then he also says in Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority. Because you can have all the power in the world you want. But if you don't have the authority to use it, your power is useless. You see, when you get the Holy Ghost, God gives you power, Pastor Ose. But when you live according to the Word of God, He gives you authority. We are powerless Christians. Yeah, they spoke in tongues, but they don't live according to the Word of God, and they have no authority. He said, I'm giving you power, but I'm giving you authority to use that power. And also, he said, I'm giving you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'll give you power, and I'll give you authority. I'm giving you authority to trample on serpents. We were watching videos on YouTube the other night. Church fails. You have to go on. Oh, some of them are funny. We watched one brother Moises where the drummer was drumming. The whole drum cage fell down on top of him. Oh, my God. Drum fails or church fails. Yeah. Playing the keyboard and the keyboard falls down. People trying to sing that can't sing. Preachers trying to preach and can't preach. And Oh, the hell. We were, te we were tears coming down our face. And then all of a sudden that one ended and went into a different video. You know how YouTube just keeps playing. And we went into a snake handling church. Whoo, Lord. I went from laughing to all of a sudden there's this preacher and he's got the biggest rattlesnake I've ever seen in my life wrapped around his neck. And they're shouting. Oh, they're shouting. Hallelujah. Talking in tongues and they're dancing. And then I watched as that snake took a piece out of his shoulder. The blood was pouring out. I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting no doubt. You were just bit by a rattlesnake, you fool. And they're praying and laying hands on him. And he says, well, if I'm going to live, I'll live. If I die, I die. Yeah, you're going to die. And I think he did. You see, because that's not the serpent that the word was talking about. <laughs> if you go to the Greek word for serpent... This is what comes up. Do we have it, brother? I don't know who's running it back there. I can't see. Yeah. The idea of sharpness, of vision, like a snake figuratively. Cunning. An artful, malicious person, especially Satan. See what the devil did there? He's like, I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna get them under from understanding what this authority is about. I'm gonna get them handling rattlesnakes. Dear Lord, the moment you pull a rattlesnake in this church, I'm out. Yeah. Tell you that right now. But that's not the snake he's talking about. It's that old serpent called the devil, who is sly and cunning and slithers in quietly when you're not looking when you're distracted over here he slithers in over there and when you're caught up on trying to save your marriage but then your children 
get bitten. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. When you're focused on your children and your and your marriage goes to pieces. When you're focused on something over here and it all begins to go, uh, go bad over there. The serpent waits for his moment. And slithers in. And does its work. So, but I'm giving you authority over that serpent. And scorpions. What? We're going to start handling scorpions now? Some do. It comes from the Greek word scorpios. And it means to pierce. It's less subtle than the snake. It's a piercing attack. You're going along fine. All of a sudden you're stabbed. A tragedy comes out of the blue. A situation comes out of the blue. And it stabs you. So I'm giving you authority over the subtle works of the devil. I'm giving you authority over the stabbing works of the devil. He said, and I am giving you authority over all the power. This is what excites me right here. Over all the power of the enemy. That word power is the same power that's been given us dunamis. He said, I am, the devil has, a, has power, but I am giving you authority over his power. <coughs> When's the last time you stood toe to toe with the devil and said, hey, buddy, did you forget who you were messing with? Maybe before you do that, you need to go and st stand toe to toe with a mirror and say to the person in the mirror, hey, buddy, did you forget who you are? Why is the devil messing with you? You need to go have that conversation in the mirror. You can point right at that person. You can yell at that person. Do you not know who you are? Do you not know the power you have? I should have brought a mirror out or I'd have preached to myself. Do you not know the authority you have? Why is hell running loose in your life? Oh, I feel you, Jesus. We have not been left powerless. Isaiah 59 and 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. I know who I am. I'm protected. I'm covered. God is our defender. Luke 18, 1. I'm closing with this. This is my first closing. I won't be long. You know what that means? Nothing. Luke 18, 1. And then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Don't lose heart. Pray. You're getting discouraged? Pray. You're getting tired? Pray. Saying there was a certain, in a certain city a judge who did not fear God and he had no regard for man. And there was a widow in that city and she say, came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary and he would not for a while but afterwards he said within himself though I don't fear God and I don't respect men yet this widow troubles me another translation says she's driving me crazy she's pestering me Every time I meet her at the market, she won't let it go. I go to the post office. Guess who's there? It's her. I go out to eat. Guess who's at the table beside me? It's that woman. I go to the park to walk my dog. Guess who's got her little chihuahua? It's her. She's there. One writer says she's troubled me day and night and because she won't let it go I'll give her what belongs to her let's stand I 
ask you one final question today. <clears throat> what have you just given up on? What have you just given up on? Well, my kid's a drug addict. Nothing I can do about it. It's just the way it is. Pray. Pray. Get the devil by the throat. Back him against the wall. Look him straight in the eye. And remind him who you are. What is it you've walked away from? What is it you've given up on? What is it you've lost hope for? Right now, right where you stand, would you raise your hands? I feel the Holy Ghost. I want you right now to encourage yourself in the Lord. We're going to follow the steps of David here this morning. Go ahead. I want you to say out loud something God has done for you. I want you to start listing things. Go ahead. Take about a couple of minutes right now. We're closing. I'm done preaching. Preach to yourself for a few minutes. I want you to begin right now. I don't care if you've got to go back 50 years. I want you to begin to recount some things out loud so you can hear your own voice. He healed my body when I was sick. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. I hear some of you. Come on. Open your mouth. Come on. Speak it right out. Speak it so the devil can hear you. He healed me. God, I remember when I broke my foot and I was on crutches. God, and I went to church that afternoon and you healed me. And I walked out of there healed by the power of God. Oh, God, I remember as a teenager I had asthma. And I had an asthma attack in the middle of nowhere and I thought I was going to die. But I cried out to you and you healed me of asthma right on the spot. God, if you did that then, you can touch me now. Go ahead, somebody. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You picked me up when I was down. God, you put food on my table when I didn't have a dime. God, you got me a job when I couldn't get one. God, you protected my kids when I couldn't be there. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. God, you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. You've been kind. You've been just. You've been true. You've been faithful to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I want you to do right now? I wasn't going to do this, but I want you to take about two minutes right now. I want you to turn to somebody close to you and tell them something God did for you. If you've got to walk across an aisle, go ahead find somebody. Now don't give them your whole life story. We don't have another hour. But find somebody and tell them something God did for you. Give them a testimony. Don't be shy. We need you to do this. Somebody's miracle could be wrapped up in your obedience right now. Go ahead. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. I was so sick. But God raised me up. I had cancer and the doctor said I only have three months to live. But that was 10 years ago and I'm still here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was bound by alcohol. But Jesus set me free. I was a meth addict. But God delivered me. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Uh, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Yeah, yeah, yes. Tell somebody, look what the Lord did for me. Look what the Lord did for me. Look what the Lord did for me. Oh, this is good. This is good. It's testimony time. This is what the Lord did for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I want everybody, I want everybody in the room, I want you to get around the front. We're going to do, we're going to take step number two here. Everybody get around this altar. Come on, step right up. Make room for everybody who wants to come. Oh, come on, come on. 
You got nothing you need back from the devil? Come on. The devil's not taking anything from you. My God, I thought this altar, we'd have been running up here this morning. Come on. Come on. Getting it back today. I'm getting it back today. I'm taking it all back today. Hey, that's it. Come on, come on, come on. You got nothing else to do today. You're just going to go with Burger King. Come on. Let's get to the altar before we go to Burger King. Come on, somebody. Hey, hey, come on. There's more than that ought to be up here. Come on. We'll make room for you. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to raise both hands in the air and I want you to inquire of the Lord. Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, what would you have me to do? You see my situation. I need you to speak to me, God. I need a word from heaven this morning. Speak to me about my children. Yes, Lord. Uh, I from you. Speak to me about my family. Speak to me you. about my, child, my grandchildren. Speak to me about my marriage. Speak to me about my job. What would you have me to do? Don't let me just react out of my flesh. God, I need to hear from you today. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Come on, we've complained and cried about it long enough. It's time to encourage ourselves and it's time to inquire. It's time to pray until an answer comes. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak to your people here this morning. Lord, that revelation come. Lord, give strategy from heaven this morning. Give answers from another world today. Come on, pray through it. Pray through it. That's it. Pray through it. Oh, I feel you, Jesus. Yeah, you're going to talk to your people here this morning. Do I just give up on my family? Do I just give up on my kids? Do I just give up on my marriage? What do I do, God? I think you're going to somebody's going to hear the word here today. Pursue. 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 Hatata Bohusha. Yes, 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 yes. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You gotta be willing to do what God puts in your heart today. God, I'm dying spiritually. What would you have me to do? God, I'm looking for more. What would you have me to do? God, my job is killing me. What would you have me to do? Come on, somebody. Oh, sing it. Jesus' name. Yeah. Come on. Somebody needs to draw a line in the sand and say, ask for me and my house. Somebody needs to remind the devil what you're touching belongs to me. What you've taken belongs to me. And I'm coming for it today. Lord, let rest come. Those, I just feel it in my spirit. Those who cannot sleep, God restore sleep. The devil has tormented the people of God long enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm taking it all back today. I'm taking it all back today. Devil, those children you're messing with, God gave them to me. They're mine. Hands off. Hands off of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, breakthrough. Breakthrough this morning. Victory this morning. I command weariness to lift off of the people of God today. Tiredness to go. The spirit of oppression to lift off of you right now. I will live and not die. I'll declare the works of the Lord. I will declare the 
That's it. That's it. Some of you are getting it today. Some of you are breaking through. Some of you have got your, your hand around the devil's neck here today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a life-changing day for somebody. Yeah, I know who I am. Hallelujah. I know who I am. Greater is he that's in me. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Devil, you hear that? That's a war cry. That's a war cry. You're in trouble. Oh, somebody else needs to let out a war cry here today. I'm coming for you, devil. I'm coming for everything you've taken. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine, and I want it back. Pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. Oh, yes. I want my peace back. I want my joy back.
for Brother Kevin. He's been battling alcoholism for years. Three weeks ago, he's been sober for three weeks. Give him a little praise. Jesus, begin to pray. I take it back in Jesus' name. I'm having it back in Jesus' name. It belongs to me in the name of Jesus. It belongs to me in the name of Jesus. I take my peace back. I take it back, I take it back. It belonged to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus name in Matthew 15 13 in Matthew 15 13 the Bible says whatever seed whatever plant my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted I want you to look at your family right now there are some things that God has not planted they need to go and God is not going to help you do it he wants you to uproot them you see, when you're reading the scripture, you have to be careful. When the Lord said, do it, you have to do it. That means nobody will help you. When the Lord said, resist the devil, it's nobody will help you resist the devil. That's why he's telling you to do it. Resist. When the Lord gives you an instruction, he's not going to do it for you. That's what he means. Whatever you see instruction in the Bible, obey it. You don't, you don't say, God, help me do it. He died on the cross. He didn't tell you to go down the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, victory is mine. Say, victory is mine. Say, victory is mine. You know, when I was young, the enemy said, I'm not going to go to school. And I, the enemy said, you can't succeed here. You're the first. You can't, you can't break through. And I told the enemy, I was praying as a teenager. I said, I'm going to break through. And I was praying one night. I so prayed that I fell asleep while praying. And I get into a trance right away, and the enemy and the Lord took me to a tree. And the Lord said, this is your education success. You want to pluck it down? 
and I took it and I ran out and I woke up. It was just like 15 minutes sleep. I woke up and the Lord said, it's done. That's the answer to your prayer you just prayed. Hallelujah. 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 It works. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you, you leaving this place free today in Jesus' name? You live in this place higher than the devil. You live in this place free from those satanic, from those things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See somebody loose this morning in the name of Jesus. Chains are broken right now in the name of Jesus. You're taking your place back in the name of Jesus. You're taking your place back in the name of Jesus. You know what? You know what? If if you if you live in a home, if you live in a home, listen. If you live in a house and your children cannot listen to you, look at how to fix it. If you can go to a point where your children don't listen to you, you need to separate yourself from the children and go pray in the secret and say, my children, you will hear my voice. You don't do it in their presence, you do it in the secret. You will hear my voice. See, the word is so powerful that even God you don't see, you hear his word. See, the word, the word we speak is beyond the natural. That is one thing we do that transcend the natural into the supernatural. The world is so powerful. When God wants to reach us in the natural, He speaks the world. When we want to reach Him in the supernatural, we speak the world. The devil hears the world. God hears the world. The world. Even the spirit of your children hear your word you say in the secret. So you don't fight them. You go in the secret place and say, hey, my children, you will hear me. James, you will hear me. John, you will hear me. Maria, you will hear me. That's how to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy will not bring you down again.
Thus says the Lord that you have entered into a time of unrest and you have felt uncomfortable and you have even questioned, am I right with God or is God angry with me or what is going on in my life? But the Lord of hosts would say to you this day, my child, that this is a new season that has come upon you. And the restlessness that you are feeling is the passing away of an old season and the beginning of a new season, says the Lord. And I will make you uncomfortable to cause you to leave yesterday and to step into the now, says the Lord. For I have heard your prayers and I have bottled your tears. I have felt your pain in the past season and a new thing is being birthed in your life, says the Lord of hosts. Do not war against it nor fight against it for it is me that is doing it, says the Lord. Trust me and step into the fulfillment of what you have been praying for. This is a new season. This day in your life, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and celebrate the Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your hands and wave your hands for the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Yes.
express I know of it. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. today is good. I love that testimony. God broken right now. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. his new relationship and his plan 